fucking fuck. Right, this is just going to edit it. This is going to get edited out. Right, okay. <laughs> right. Hi, this is Luke from Guide to Match Betting. Today we are joined by Khan Berry. Khan, good to have you here on the channel. Cheers, Luke. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself before we get started? Okay. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know me, my background story is uh, I kind of fumbled my way into Betfair trading. Previously, prior to Betfair trading, I was in the military. Um, and before that, I worked at McDonald's. I've got no formal education. I haven't been to university. Nothing flash like that. It's uh, just a good old bit of grit determination and uh, persistence really okay that's uh that's really interesting because obviously it shows people that what we're going to be talking about today bet fair trading you don't need to be a genius you don't need a, a history of working in uh, betting or sports or maths or anything like that but we will get into that before we get started we'll do a bit of background firstly khan is here on youtube he's got a lot more subscribers than i have but there's a link in the description below if you want to go and check out his channel then i recommend you do so uh, there's also a few other links that you should check out in the description below relating to Khan's site and his courses and whatnot, but I'm sure we'll get to those a little bit later as well. So Khan, why don't you tell me uh, a bit about your background in trading and betting? Were you always interested in horse racing and betting in general? Um, no, to be quite honest, Luke, it was the uh, other end of the spectrum. I never set foot in, in a betting shop until later in life. Um, and it was purely down to one Christmas. The girl I was seeing at the time, her family went, and uh, I felt as though I had to, really. So <laughs> I sort of just fumbled along. And when I first walked into the betting shop, I didn't even know what the fractional odds meant, anything. Um, although it didn't take long after that to become quite hooked, as it were, yeah. uh, once yeah. I started to see there might be some potential for making money there. Yeah, I can I can definitely agree with that. I was the same. I was never go into going into the bookies. I still very rarely go into the bookies, actually. I know a lot of people are into doing things like that with Sharbin and whatnot, but never been for me really going into the bookies itself. So how did you first get into trading? Was that straight after you first went to the bookies or how long was it between? No, um, and you know, this is a question that comes up time and again. Um, and I, I never actually know the you know, the specific answer, because I didn't record a lot very early on. Um, I wasn't very clear about recording results, what I was doing. Um, and so the timeframes are a bit blurry. But basically, I, f I found uh, trade, I found betting and, and stuff like that, like I just said there, and then went into trading. I think it was after, there was one of two things that happened. First of all, there was a sequence of very short clips on TV called Blag a Million, where people went around and tried to blag some cash out of someone and actually visited a guy that, that did some Betfair trading. And also around about the same time, I noticed a couple of different comments on the forum mentioning the Geeks toy, which is the software I use for trading. Um, and then obviously once I found my way onto that forum, it, it just sort of opened the open Pandora's box and that was it. Yeah, so it's not, it's not as if for you or for anyone else that there's a set date where people just start. It's probably if you're already getting into betting, then you probably already have some sort of interest in trading, or at least you would if you get yourself started. Uh, so a lot of people just make that natural progression across, I guess. Um, and obviously you yeah, were saying... I think there's a lot of benefits if you come from um, a betting background in the sense of if you understand, you know, the, the limitations and characteristics of different, um, whether it's sports, the way things bet, uh, the rules or that kind of stuff. It's obviously beneficial, but maybe coming from, from my background is helpful as well in the sense that I wasn't any kind of sort of fanatic. Um, I didn't have, I wasn't overly romantically attached to, to betting as such or the team that was betting on because that can be counterproductive as well. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people get swayed by their personal biases around certain teams or horses or whatever. What about yeah. YouTube? How did you first get into YouTube and making videos? <laughs> Do you know what? It just seems like it's one mistake after another, Luke, to be honest. So, first of all, once I started to trade, I uh, I, I wanted to, to record some results, um, and I wasn't very clear about how I did that, so I didn't have heaps of spreadsheets. Not really that kind of analytical guy that does that sort of stuff. Um, so I started screen recording my screen at the time of trading with the software and then i'd go back and go through through what i'd done around about the same time and to this day i have no idea why i started to do it but i did start a blog um if anything it was probably just to sort of document what i was doing and a little bit of discipline and, and whatnot like that but around about the same time i was blogging and people said oh well let's see some of these and so i just uploaded them and it, and it went from there that's that's really cool. I, I wish uh, things happened naturally like that for me. It, it wasn't always that natural, though, to be honest with you, Luke, because yeah. um, if you go back and look at some of the videos, they're not very fluent and they're quite disjointed in places. So there's a little bit of old footage there on YouTube if you go back far enough. I think that's the same with a lot of channels. When you're making channels like yours and I guess mine as well, when you're providing people with information rather than just entertainment, 
uh, people people like what you have to say more than how you say it, I guess. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on to match betting. Uh, have you ever done match betting? Do you know anything about match betting? And um, what are your thoughts on match betting? Okay, so I've never set out to do match betting originally. Um, it's something that I've become aware of in recent years. And I guess on route, I've, I, I had done a little bit of match betting, but I didn't, you know, it was it didn't have that structure and all the tags and how it works, as you see now with some of the big sites. But um, it was, I don't, I don't want to kind of like be condescending or such, but it seemed like quite an obvious thing to do. Um, being a heavy exchange user and learning to trade, obviously I realised that you can match up the two different outcomes to sort of then uh, cancel out your loss and then and then pull the bonus in the process. So I guess in answer to your question there, I, I did do some match betting, although I didn't call it match betting or go via the conventional route. I just thought it was common sense to pick up a few bonuses on route. Um, so I did do that. And I know I sort of targeted the bigger events as well, where, where they give away the bigger bonuses. It just, it just seemed logical. Yeah, I don't think it's that condescending at all, to be honest. I think a lot of people who haven't started think it's a lot more complicated than it actually is so it's probably a bit reassuring to hear you say that it's kind of common sense and fairly obvious so for those of you that are watching that still haven't got yourself started then obviously make sure you check out some of the other videos the other guides and whatnot here on the channel okay moving on to the main part of this video of talking about betfair trading uh, so obviously we've already covered a little bit about it but did trading instantly click for you i know you said that you've been making videos to analyze your performance um, so perhaps things didn't instantly click for you? No, they certainly didn't. Um, so jumping back to what I said previously, it was more a case of fumbling through, doing some screen recordings, um, and then sort of test and adjust consistently into the small hours after work, um, which is probably something I should mention as well, because it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's not the same as match betting in the sense of, you know, with match betting, it's kind of like one, two, three, go and you're away. Trading is a little bit more technical. There's a lot more to it. Uh, obviously, part of the process is actually losing as well. I know you lose on your qualifiers with match betting, um, although it's it's slightly different in that sense. So it didn't instantly click for me at all. And there was probably, again, it's hard to say exactly how long it was, but there was a period of maybe six months to a year where I wasn't really profitable. It was two steps forward, one back, you know, sometimes three back. But, you know, just sort of fumbled my way through to success. But the one point I wanted to make there was um, outside the markets, I'm really quite headstrong as a character anyway, which is probably what carried me through in the early days because there wasn't much information out there. There wasn't YouTube channels and courses and all that kind of stuff as well. So I think that if you're approaching trading, you probably need to be a little bit more obsessive, maybe, for want of a better word, than yeah. if you're coming into match betting. Yeah, I think uh, you answered it there with the saying it took you six to 12 months, maybe, where you were really learning. Would you say that you were unprofitable in that time? Were you a losing trader? I know that I'm sure I've read on your site before that you were actually close to giving up at one point. Um, would you elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, there was, uh, I think there was actually, I can remember the title of the blog post. I can't remember what the content was, but it was kind of like crash and burn. And I, and I said to myself, right, this is the point. It's like, if I don't, if I don't make a go of it as of like, you know, a month from now, then that's it. I'm going to sack it off. Um, the, the exact point where it sort of like went to profitability, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Like I said, I didn't keep good results. Um, but there was a point where it sort of like just skyrocketed, not ex not quite exponentially, but it sort of went from nothing to like, wow, I'm making more of an evening than I am at work, nine to five, um, in half the amount of time, which was obviously quite cool. Um, but when, when that point was exactly, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Okay, so what would you say the benefits are for Betfair trading over match betting? I mean, I know that you said before you can't make hundreds of pounds with match betting. I mean, that that can be debatable. There are some offers out there where you can earn a few hundred or even a few thousand pounds at a time. But So why would you go for Betfair trading over match betting for perhaps short term or long term? Sure, I'd say, I mean, it's a long term answer. It's, it's the only answer it can be. Um... And like I said, I've not got anything against match betting. I know there's like a little bit snobbery out there, it seems, amongst trading circles where people think that it's kind of cool to look down on match betting. But at the end of the day, take everything you can. I think you should always take everything you can. And the route to go would be to take some match betting profits, be it smaller, and then move on to trading as a longer term thing, as you suggested there. Um, purely because the, the sky's the limit in the sense of earnings in comparison, I would say anyway. I know you said about the offers there. Um, and also, it's more of a longer term thing. You're not getting your account closed. Um, there's there's extra charges. Obviously, everyone's aware of the premium charge and stuff like that. But it's more of a long term, high 
higher profitable thing. But as with anything in life, the bigger the barrier to entry, the more um, payoff is usually on the other side. Yeah, okay. So just to highlight for those uh, watching, um, I guess the main benefit of Betfair trading over match betting would be consistent long-term earnings without ever having a fear that your account could be limited or gubbed or whatever else. Okay, so what's your typical trading day look like? I know a lot of people that are watching this will probably only have an hour or two spare a day at most, perhaps a bit more on the weekends. So for those watching that actually need to learn the process as well as obviously trading to make some money, uh, what would your day look like and how would you suggest that their days look like? So it's a flexible question. There's obviously like quite a flexible answer to that. Um, one of the main attractions for trading for me was also the freedom. It's not even necessarily the finance, the fact that you can do what you want. So um, for me, obviously, I sent around horse racing. So any time, depending on time of year, uh, sort of two in the afternoon to, to four or five um, is the primary trading time. Before that, I want to make sure that I'm set up. Uh, I've bared in mind what's actually happening on the day. I've got the tools ready. You know, you, you want to be prepared, basically. It's, it's a bit like we match betting, you know. You don't want to dive in and start doing an offer before you've even calculated how much the return is going to be or whatever stake you've got to use. Um, so I think... The, the first thing I'd say is take a step back um, look at what's on offer that day because obviously opportunity is not equal. There's different opportunities on different days. Predominantly, if you're part-time, I used to target the sort of Thursday, Friday uh, evenings in a week on the all-weather because it's all, all year round. Um, and obviously in the summer, you get better racing as well. And then Saturday afternoon. Now, Saturday afternoon is a bit like, your, I guess, if you were going to compare the two, it's a bit like your sign-up offers. It's like the low-hanging fruit. There's extra volume in the markets. There's more races. There's better quality coverage, all that kind of stuff. But it, it, it depends entirely on what you're looking to trade. But I think one of the other things that's, you know, compared to a nine to five job, trading is appealing in the sense that you can pick and choose what you do and when you do it. And you don't even have to trade the whole card if you don't want to. Yeah. OK, so that's some pretty helpful advice out there. Uh, I know that from match betting, I'm sure a lot of match bettors will be aware that Saturdays, typically you're going to get higher liquidity. You're going to have more offers on perhaps. So the actual time that you put into it probably doesn't change too much you might want to just uh, sacrifice a weekend here or there or some few or a few hours in the week here or there to start to look to move towards betfair trading instead of just taking every single offer you can because mo most people should know if they don't already that taking every single offer that's out there is probably not a good long-term strategy so perhaps look towards to making a move into betfair trading which is how what we're going to talk about now what would your top tips be for making that move if you've been in match betting for a short term or long term how would you make that move across and what tips would you have yeah sure so um i think we kind of touched on it briefly there maybe uh, the first thing is obviously to step back absorb all the information you can because like getting the fastest route to success is obviously understanding the situation um and we don't want to be going down that gambling route of just like impulsively and, and reactionally doing things because there's no edge there's no advantage to that it's like the advantage in match betting is obviously the offer like without the offer you've got nothing so um, in trading the if it was comparable then it would be having you know some knowledge over the market as to why a certain characteristic is going to make the market behave in that that particular time frame so obviously coming from match betting you've already got like a base layer of understanding how the exchanges work the fact that you place a back or a lay and and you know you match up the two bets against each other to, to lock in your position so Trading is no different in that sense. Obviously, you need software and, and extra information to do that effectively because you need to have an edge within the markets being an advantage over that situation. Again, if I was to compare it, match betting, your edge or advantage would be the free bet. Um, in trading, it's having a piece of information or knowledge about how the market's behaving and so that you've got more than, you know, more than a 50% payoff chance of your next next move. Um, which comes from primarily having software, stuff like that, speed advantages, streaming charts, all, all that sort of useful stuff. And the only other thing I think to say, if you're making that transition from match bet into trading, is there's a psychological element that's quite heavy within trading. Now, again, going back to the match bet and stuff, it's very fixed. It's very one, two, three. And so, you know, it doesn't really, unless you suddenly freak out halfway through doing an offer, then you haven't really got to worry about your psychology in the moment. Um, with trading, that's very different because if you start to lose some money, it's a bit like gambling. You go and chase, um, you can react impulsively, and that's, that's not going to help you at all. So I think you need to be aware that not only is it technical, it's emotional as well, manually trading. Um, you need an edge or advantage. 
and probably need some software and uh, to, to wrap into that as well to give you the best sort of most efficient approach to, to transitioning over yeah, uh, so obviously you touched upon the software there. I know that a lot of people have spoken to me before about looking to make the move into Betfair trading. They think that they can sit there and just click the red and blue buttons on Betfair and make make the money that way. I mean, you might have some short-term success by chance, and honestly, a lot of people can do it just by chance, but it won't last long-term unless you can uh, learn to use proper software. So there's a few recommendations for that. I'm not going to plug any here, although uh, I'm sure you have your own personal favourites. Yeah. Um, and, and another important thing is what you talk about the emotional side of it there. I know that when I've made mistakes match betting in the past and everyone makes mistakes, a lot of people will, you know, put the wrong lay figure in or perhaps the most common one is not getting matched on a lay. Uh, most people will know that you should just take the bad odds. If you if the odds drift, you should just take it and accept the loss. But many people will think, oh, I'll gamble. And then inevitably the horse doesn't win and you lose a chunk of money. And what my advice is normally when that happens is just to carry on, do as much as you can make that money back as quick as you can. But with trading, it doesn't seem to be that way. You would perhaps, if you make a big mistake, you wouldn't want to go flying in trying to chase that money back as quickly as you can. No, it's exactly the same, Luke. I think just to add into that, I, I was thinking about that and uh, a lot of people that contact me for help and stuff, they go in play as well, which is just the same. It's literally just the same. They're in a bad trade. Rather than accept it's wrong, close out their loss, like you just said there, move on to the next one, make what you can back. They let it go and play, they lose their bank, and then you know, then they realise and it's a lot more painful to do it that way around. So so your advice what would your advice be if someone had just made a massive mistake and had, you know, a, a huge loss in relative to the size of the bank? I mean, first and foremost, you try to not ever put yourself in a position where you're gonna lose a big chunk of your bank, of course, but people make mistakes. So what would the advice be in that situation? Yeah, but well, it's very similar to yours. Prevention is always better than cure. It's like I always say, like, you know, trading is like a car crash. You can't go back and undo it afterwards. Um, so <laughs> ideally, you want to stop it before it happens. But ultimately, you need to just close it out, accept the loss, take it on the chin, probably get up and get out of the room just to call off, just so you don't then come back and make another mistake. Now, obviously, you're here to talk a little bit today about what you can offer to other traders as well, because you're not just a trader yourself, but you do teach people how to trade. As I've already mentioned, you've got a YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. But you also got some courses as well. Again, there's links in the description to those. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the courses and what they offer and who they could be most beneficial for? Sure. Um, much like everything I seem to have done, it was uh, just something that sort of developed over time. Um, as I've said earlier on, we were talking there, there, there was very little out there in the first place um, by way of sort of teaching people about how the markets function. So that's where it was all born from. Um, there's a couple of different products, but ultimately the, the, the main core product would be the video course, um, selection of previous trades that I've made myself, obviously profitable, some mistakes as well, because, you know, reality is part of trading is losing at times as well. It doesn't always go in your favour. Um, and I've just sort of structured that and we're updating that in the process as well, um, um, in the process of updating that, sorry, to make that more structured so that sort of anybody can come in at entry level um, and then progress up into the markets and, and understand, you know, the flashing numbers, the charts, what's going on, what, why it happens as it does within the market. So then obviously puts you in a better position to uh, not make those mistakes and hopefully make some profit in the process. Okay, yeah, and uh, I have seen that video firsthand. We have reviewed it on the Guide to Match Betting website, so I guess I'll put our review to that in the description below. Uh, we did give it a five-star review. Um, just want to point out, wasn't paid. You haven't uh, pulled my arm or told me that I've got to give it a five-star review in exchange for doing a video or anything like that. It must have been over a year ago that we reviewed that for the first time or maybe coming up to a year. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but, yeah, it's a, great, it's a great course. There's plenty of detail in there, and we would recommend it, obviously. Uh, and you've got a couple of other products, a, a trading guide and a, and a tennis trading one as well. So it's not just uh, for horse racing fans that are out there. Yeah, no, of course not. There's, uh, I mean, the, the, initially the first, the first thing that, that I did was create the uh, the guide. Uh, since then, it was like you know people wanted a, a few bolt on visual videos because it's more visual, um, and people wanted to see my own trading naturally as well. Uh, obviously, it's very hard to share that live because there's people on the other end of the market and all them kind of problems as well. But uh, selection sort of over time to give a, a full variety of the different types of markets, the different situations of experience and then how to respond to that. Um, obviously, I can't 
pick and choose when a uh, sort of certain setups going to happen within a market. So it just made sense to record a whole load and then turn it into a, a full uh, selection of videos. Okay, uh, I guess that's everything that we were here to talk about today. Of course, we've had background, the opinions on match betting, how to move across into trading as well, a few tips that you can pick up. So if you didn't um, pick up on all of the tips, I'll put some timestamps in the description. So for those of you that want to go back and re-listen to certain sections, there's some great advice in there. So use those timestamps to jump back to certain parts of the video. And uh, thank you very much for joining us on the video today. No problems. Thanks for having us, Luke. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Goodbye.